Okay, this video is exactly what it says on the tin. We're going to start approximating limits graphically, meaning we're going to be looking at a bunch of pictures of graphs of functions. We're going to be presented with some limits, and we're going to try and approximate those things. Now, I'm going to use that word approximation heavily in this video and in the next one. Because what we need to keep in mind are that these are not actually evaluations. These are our best guesses of these limits. We're going to be presenting, or be presented with, sorry, some evidence, the graphs. And based on that evidence, we're going to draw some reasonable conclusions. And I'll talk a little bit more later about why those conclusions are only reasonable guesses. All right, so let's start with a visual of some graph of some function. Who cares what it is? Let's call this thing f of x. And based on this graph, we want to look at the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x and try and approximate it graphically. We're going to have a lot of good evidence, but our answer is going to be only an approximation. All right, let's dig into this thing. So as a recap, we need to be looking at one-sided limits here. We saw at the end of our last video that for a limit to exist, a two-sided limit to exist, we need the left and the right-sided limits to both match up with the same real number. What we're going to be looking at is trying to find the y value, a single real number y value, that the function gets arbitrarily close to, as in this case, x approaches 3. Or we could say x is sufficiently close to 3. Okay, so what does that actually mean? Well, let's go back to this idea of breaking it up into left and right-sided limits. Let's consider the left-sided limit first. What we're going to do is try and figure out what the y values on this function are doing as x is sufficiently close to, but not equal, and less than 3. Okay, so here we go. This is kind of a bizarre picture at first, but let me see if we can follow it. What I'm doing is picking some x values. I'm starting off here with 2. I'm saying 2 is kind of close to 3, and it certainly is less than 3. Here's the y value that corresponds with 2. Neat. Now I'll look at a bigger x value, something that's even closer to 3, right? This is probably 2 and a half, right? And we'll try and look at the... Oh, I think I said y value. I meant x value, a bigger x value, something closer to 3. Uh, and we'll see that the y value here is a little less than negative 1. And then you'll see we keep moving to the right. Because we're on the left side of 3, we keep getting closer and closer and closer. If we go back to Zeno's paradox, this is almost like our student taking another step and dividing this distance in half, right? Marching towards this Point or non-point, who really cares, at x equals 3. So we're marching our x values towards 3, and we're seeing what happens to the y values. Well, we can see as we move along this path, our y values are decreasing, right? They are dropping. And we can try and figure out what they're getting close to. So we can take a look at like a pattern almost of these, and we can see it looks like they're getting closer and closer and closer to negative 2. So what we might say is that the limit as x approaches 3 on the left of this function f of x is negative 2. Now, this is really kind of like an equals with a question mark. Because again, we're approximating this. We're making a best guess. What I mean by that is that I'm not actually 100% certain that these y values are approaching negative 2. It could be that if we zoom in, really, really, really close. And we get a lot of detail on this. It could be that the y value here is actually like negative 1.978 that we're getting close to. I don't know. But from this scale, it looks like they're getting pretty close to negative 2. We're in a math class. We're used to answers being nice, tangible, integer, or maybe fraction values that we can get at easily. So if I was betting money on this, I'd bet that the answer here is negative 2, that that's the number that these y values are approaching. But this is really just a best guess. Similarly, we can do the same thing on the right. We'll use blue for the right-sided limit. And now you'll notice we started off with an x value of 4, kind of close to 3, but bigger than 3. That's the part that we care about. And then we want to find something that's close to 3, in the x values, but bigger than 3. And so you can see that we're moving towards 3 from the right. So we're moving leftwards 
from the right side of three towards it. And we're following. What do the y values do? Well, it looks like they start here and they start decreasing again. And hey, look at that. If I'm a betting person, I'm betting that the right-sided limit here is also, what is this, going to 3? It's also going to be negative 2. It looks like on the left and on the right, the function values are approaching the same y value. Now, notice I really am not taking into account that this point here is open. Our function seems to not be defined at x equals 3. We've got a hole in our function. I really don't care because what we're looking at is just what y value we're getting really, 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 really close to, arbitrarily close to, as x gets close to 3 but is not equal to 3. So whether it's on the left of it or on the right of it, we don't care that it's actually not going to hit 3. We want to see what does it look like the y values are getting arbitrarily close to. All right, so again, this was our picture. And so what I like to do is to just kind of sketch those arrows on here because drawing all those points can be kind of cluttery. And so maybe if we just draw the arrows, we can see it looks like we're approaching this Y value here at negative two. So my best guess here is that the left side limit and the right side limit are both negative two. This is another way of visualizing it that I really, really like. Instead of cluttering things up with arrows and stuff like that, what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on this gray bar. So this gray bar we're setting up with an interval of x values, essentially. I'm going to use black here for it. We have this interval of x values. It looks like in this case it's going from 2.5 to 3.5. We don't really care. We just want x values that are around 3, right? and hopefully close to 3. So we set up this interval, we trace it down, and we find out what parts of our function are in the interval. And then what we ask is, what are those y values? Well, it looks like our biggest y value is right here, and our smallest y value looks like it's like maybe right around here. It's hard to tell. So if we're drawing y values, we'll say this, oh, I'm not going to use yellow for that. You can't see it. Let's use pink. This is our bar of y values for this interval of x values. Okay, so why is that helpful to look at? Well, what we can do now is start shrinking this interval of x values. Let's make that bar smaller, and let's consider the y values now. Our y values look like they're starting to get squished down together, right? And now we're just in this really, really, really thin range of y values if we're considering this thin domain of x values. And we want to keep this thought exercise happening of what would happen if we squished this interval in really, really far, right? If we did that, then what kind of y values would we expect to be getting out in this range of y values? Well, we can see pretty clearly that it looks like our interval of y values, I'll use pink for this, is collapsing again. And where is it collapsing towards? It looks like negative 2. So again, we started with a visual of this, and we had some pretty convincing evidence that the limit as x approached 3 on the left for this function was negative 2, and the limit as x approaches 3 on the right of this function was also negative 2. We had that result that says for a two-sided limit to exist, the left and the right both have to be the same. So we have really good evidence that this is our limit. Notice I'm just saying we have good evidence of this approximation here. We're guessing that that's it. Because again, maybe this interval is like collapsing only on negative uh, 1.999285, some number that happens to be close to negative 2. And in our version of looking at this graph, we can't tell the difference. So that's what we're thinking about. Um, for one-sided limits, I really like these pictures that we've got. For one-sided limits, we'll just look at the one side of the graph. You can see what sides we've got. Maybe I'll use red for that, actually. We'll just take a look at one side of the y values and one side the y values there. And so we can kind of look at these intervals instead for our right-sided limits. So that's what we've got for approximation of limits graphically so far. Let's try another one. 
we've got this other function called g of x. It looks a little bit more complicated. We're going to try and figure out this limit as x approaches negative 1 graphically. We can draw some arrows if you want. We can say we're really looking at, uh, maybe I'll use green for this. We're really looking at getting close to this x value. That's negative 1. And the way that we're going to do that is follow our graph from the left and see what does it look like the y values are doing. Where are they going? And follow our graph on the right. And we'll say, where are these y values going? Again, this kind of a picture can be a little clunky. We'll notice that we really don't care about this point right here. Sure, f, or sorry, in this case, g of 3, uh, of negative 1, sorry, g of negative 1 is equal to 3, but we actually don't care. That has nothing to do with the limit. The limit is trying to figure out what are the y values doing as x gets really, really, really close to negative 1 without actually touching it. So let's go ahead and do that little bar thing that we had earlier. Let's take a look at the behavior. And I'm just going to start pretty zoomed in. Here's our left side. And here's our right side. And we can trace these back and figure out what kind of y values we're expecting here on the left and on the right. And what we'll see is that it looks like they're not approaching the same thing. It looks like we've got some good evidence that the limit as x approaches negative 1 on the left of this g of x function looks like that's 2. And the right-sided limit as x approaches negative 1 for this g of x function, it looks like that's actually down here at negative 1. Whether we're thinking about movement with arrows towards here or these bars that we have, uh, intervals of y values that are collapsing slowly, it looks like... The y values on the left are going to 2, and the y values on the right are going to negative 1. So, again, we've got good evidence that the left side limit is 2, the right side limit is negative 1. They are not the same thing. And so what we would say then is that this limit doesn't exist, or at least we have lots of evidence of this. Now, I would say that you're pretty much good saying that this limit doesn't exist. You can see the kind of disconnect on our graph on the left and on the right of negative 1. They're never going to be approaching the same y value. This is much easier to see than just that silly example above where we said, well, maybe the y value that we're approaching wasn't negative 2. It was like negative 2.04, and it's hard to notice the difference. A couple more examples for you to just look at. Pause the video and think about these, but I've already got the little bars set up on these. So here's one. See if we can figure out what this limit is going to be. This one is a really good one because we can notice that that's why we're just approximating things. So pause the video, see if you can get an idea. Hopefully what you're seeing is that the left side limit here looks like it's approaching whatever this y value is. And the right-sided limit here looks like it's approaching the same thing. I'm pretty sure the limit exists, but it's hard for me to tell what it is. So this is, again, why we have an approximation set up on this. We're confident, maybe, that the limit exists, but to tell what it actually is, maybe I'd have to say, like, I don't know, approximately equal to 3.4-ish? Not really sure. There's probably a real easy to find value for this if we knew what the function was and later on we'll deal with that but this is why graphical approximations are just approximations all right here's another one take a look at this one hopefully we'll be able to see what's going on here all right in the left side hopefully we can see that these y values are kind of stuck right on negative one and on the right side these y values are kind of stuck on positive 1. And so what I'm going to say is that this limit does not exist. Because again, for existence of limits, we need the left side limit as x approaches 1. Oops, that's supposed to be a left side. To be the same thing as the right sided limit. And they're clearly not. So hopefully this is helpful to get a feel for how we can approximate limits graphically. And again, like in this problem, why these are solely approximations. This is not a perfect evaluation of this limit. We can get a really good guess sometimes. In this case, not as good of a guess as we maybe would have liked. 
we can get a really good guess of what's going on. But hopefully that's helpful to see. Left side limit, right side limit, make sure they match up. That's all we've got for this. We're going to take a look at some more approximation techniques in the next video.